Hi everyone, my name is Alba Silvente and I'm going to talk about how to take a story block to the next level using atomic design methodology. Let's see. Well, first of all, I want to introduce myself a little bit. I'm Alba Silvente, as I told you, and I'm from Spain, but living in the Netherlands at the moment. I work as a senior front-end developer consultant at a company called Blue Harvest IO. And in my free time, I used to write blogs about uh, the technology I use in my side projects. And also I speak in some conference and podcast and I'm contributing in the open source community. So I'm a community believer and I think we, we would need to do it to make it grow. The past year after writing my blog and, and also start working inside projects, I, I have been named ambassador of Storyblock and Nax, the technologies I use for my personal blog and also for all the side projects I'm working on. So I'm so happy to be part of the team and I hope to do a great job and spread the word. <laughs> so first, uh, let's see a little bit of introduction about what and why we are doing this. Uh, first, uh, let's explain a little bit what is a story block, what is atomic design, the type of levels we have, and why combine this, these things. <laughs> well, a story block is a hella CMS, so it's the place where you will edit, add, and delete your content, basically. Instead of having a markdown file in your project, you will have a website where you will go and start writing content. So the, the fantastic thing of a Hello CMS is that you have a CMS, but you have your project, your front-end project separated. So the separate of concerns is made and it will be easy to scale your application and you will see why. And you just need an anxious or a fetch call to get the content from the story block. So it's so easy to use for you as a developer, but also it's easy to use for people that doesn't know anything about code because they just need to enter in a website, log in and start writing content in the story block that's bar, and you will see after why. Well, then what is Atomic Design? Atomic design is a methodology for creating design systems, chemistry based. So why chemistry based? Because it has levels that are named as the chemistry you will see in the next slide. So to understand better this design system or how you will create it with this methodology, uh, you need to think uh, the sentence that we will check now. It's a mental model to think of user interfaces as a cohesive whole and a collection of parts at the same time. So you will have components that are reusable in your project, but also you will have pages with these components and are also important. So you, you need to think about the things you are creating as a reusable component and also a part of your page. And you will see in the levels better the understanding of this methodology. First, you need to think about the atomic design as levels. For me, it's like that. So we have atoms, the small unit you have in your application that is not useful by itself. Why? Because you have an input or a level, but you don't have the, the combination of both. So you don't have a field. You just have an input. You need the level to make the field. For that, you have the molecule that is a group of atoms. So you can group the level and the input and create the field. And after that, you will have the organs. It's just the group of molecules. So you will have more than one field in a form. So the form will be an organism. And then you have a template that is just the skeleton of your, of your page. Why the skeleton? Because you are combining molecules and organisms in a, in a simple page, but without real content. So for that, you create the template with these organisms and molecules. And to have the real page, you need the real data. So in the page, you will call the API and you will return everything to the template. And the template will fulfill the organisms, the molecules, and the atoms. And you will have the real content in your page. And why combine this methodology with a story block if a story block is a, a hello CMS? 
because when you are structuring your dashboard, you will need to think also how to structure your front end project because it's totally related. So with a design system is uh, easy to scale your application because you have reusable content. Easily align with designers and frontenders because they already know about design systems and will understand better how you are structuring your, your dashboard. Also, because you have more control over the content you are creating because you have the reusable components, you know what, how it will be. And also to, to have a common language between everyone is working in that project and improve reusability, easy updates and less components because you have everything made reusable. <laughs> so that's why uh, you need to combine them in the structure of your project. So <laughs> now finally, we will see how to structure our story block space, the dashboard itself with the atomic design methodology. Let's see. Well, first uh, we will talk about the atoms. The atoms is not part of your dashboard, it's more part of your code. Why? Because the molecules are the ones that will communicate with these components in properties what they want to fulfill. So in our project, we will have a view component, for example, or a React component with the input. So we will, we will expect some properties to be fulfilled and the molecules will be the step that will fulfill these properties. So for example, think as an atom, a heading, a H tag or a paragraph, a P tag of HTML. So it's just the simple things you have in your application. So they don't need to have a place in the dashboard of its story block. They just need to be in your code. And for the molecules, it's a slightly different because it will affect your code because you need the molecule in your code defining how to call the atoms and in our dashboard because we will expect the content that will fulfill the atoms. So we have the component in the dashboard and in our project. In the dashboard, to create the molecule, we need to create a group name uh, that is a simple folder that will be called obviously molecules <laughs> and inside this folder we will create a component called for example service car so the service car we will have an icon uh, a name and a description so to fulfill all the atoms we have created for this card we will need to have an input for each of the properties we need to fulfill and for that we create the the fields you can see in the screenshot and when you are creating these fields, you are creating the content that you will send to the atoms we will, we will see before. If you check here, you will have an image for the icon, a color for the icon, a text for the heading, and a text for the paragraph. So it's simple as that. And when you have the molecule created, you start thinking about the organisms. So in the organism level, you will have the same as the in molecules. You will have a group name called organisms that will be the folder you will place your components in the dashboard. And also you will create a new component. This time will be called services and you are placing in the folder of organisms. So to Create an organism is slightly different because you don't have to fulfill each atom. You have to call a molecule. You don't have to fulfill any data itself. You need to call the molecule that already will have this content for the atom. So the organism itself is just a field that will expect the molecule that have relation with this organism. So for the services, you have service card as the related molecule. And you, to do it, you just need to create a field called type blocks. Why type blocks? Because you can add the components you have created in your story block dashboard as a field. It's like the content will be another component with more content inside. <laughs> so it's a nested component. And where you want to only allow the service card we have created, 
you need to go to the checkbox you can see here that allow only specific components to be inserted, check it, and then in the component whitelist, you need to search your molecule and place it. For that, you need to create before the molecule and then the organism. Otherwise, you don't have this component already created and you don't have how to put it here. And you can also place the maximum of service card you want to show in your grid. For example, four. And for that, I create this. Okay. Then when you when you have already created the organisms, the molecules, and the atoms in your code, you will have the template. Uh, the template is the same as we see before, but with a difference. The content type, instead of being nestable as the molecules and organisms, will be content type. Why content type? Because it's like our skeleton, so it's a content type. When you are creating a page as home, about us, contact us, you are creating a page. But when you are creating an article, you are creating another template, the blog post, for example. So for that is content type, because when you are creating some pages in your dashboard, you will create a content type. And in this content type, you are specifying that you have a title, as you can see in the screenshot, and also a body field. The body field will be as the services we see in an organism, but the, in this case, we only allow the group organisms. And why? Because we can place in this page any organism we have, and this organism will be related to only any kind of molecules we, we have described. So we will see better in the demo because I think it's slightly complicated to explain this in words, but you will see when we are checking the dashboard, the real dashboard. And then when we have everything created, uh, we can place the organism group as the only allowed, and you will see the result after. And then we have the page. The page is just uh, when we call uh, with access to the API from Storyblock and we get the data and then we send the data to the template. The template will send the data to the organism. The organism will send the data to the molecules and the molecules to the atoms. So it's just a step by step <laughs> from parent to child. And then to explain better this and understand what we are talking about, uh, I create a demo uh, where you can see the code for the next spread I created for this demo and also the live site. But uh, to create your own dashboard as I made, you will need to create an account in a story blog, start creating the dashboard and then get the API key and add it to the code because at the moment it's empty. So let's see the dashboard. Well, in the dashboard, you will see this, uh, these sections. First of all, you have the content page where you can see the pages I already created for you. Then you can see the components. The components are just the things I explained before, and you can see the folders I created for you. So if I click on the molecules, we will see only the molecules. It's better to, to see where are they. And also for the organisms, and you will see that the template is content type and not nestable. So you can understand better what I was talking about before. It's a content type, and that's it. Well, let's see first the molecules we have created. Well, we have a heading section. In our code, we already have a component called heading section. And it's expecting three properties. So you can see the subtitle that will be the type text. We can see the title that will be also the type text and an intro that will be a text area because it's just a paragraph and we need more content there. And then when we have the heading section, we can see the member card that is more or less the same as service card. You can see a color. I place a selector instead of putting a color picker, because for the colors I want to have, I prefer to, to keep it simple. So I just create the selector and put the options we have. And then I have a image. 
I have a title and another text for another stuff. And then we have the service card I explained in the, in the slides. You can see the assets also for the image, the color with the selector, the title for the name, and the text area. So where we have everything created, we can go to the organism and see how it is structured. First, we have the services and we have a heading. This heading is also type box. And we only specify that we want only a specific components to be inserted. And this component in this case is the heading section. We only want one heading section because we, we don't want two H1. <laughs> and then uh, for the services, we have only allow the service card. And in the service card component, you will have the, the molecule we see before. For the team is the same but just changing the services by members and only selecting the member card. And when we do this, we will see here in the content, in our page, for example, in home, we will see that we have the organism team. And when we are placing content in members, we only are allowed to get a member card. And finally, we will have the page template. The page template will have the title with a text and the body with the blocks that is only allowing organisms. So when we place anything in our page, we will have only allowed to select one organism or another. And you can see here the content, then if I click in this content I can just start writing and it will update my page. And then we have everything already declared and we can just start writing content, editing content, deleted content without problem. And that's it. If you have any questions, just let me know in the chat or ask me in downtrust <laughs> or downtrust.com. That is my website and see you there.